In my previous video, I showed you how you could make an inkinometer with MPU9250 and some basic materials. In the video, I also mentioned that this IC was an overkill for an inclinometer. I emphasized on its magnetometer. This means that the IC can potentially be used as a compass. In this video, I will show you how I converted the exact same inclinometer into a compass. If you are viewing my videos for the first time, I have provided the links for my inclinometer just for you. Do watch the video for the mechanical build process. So let's start with some theory again. If we take a simple power magnet whose dipole moment I henceforth denote by this arrow and rotate it around our x and y axis, we would get the component of the magnetic field along the axis. So for our compass, earth is our huge bar magnet and we have x and y axis rotating with our compass. Knowing the components along each of the axis, we can deduce the direction of the actual field. In the simple scenario, x component will be given by cosine of the angle times the magnitude and the y component is accompanied by the sine function. Our magnetometer has three independent axes and we cannot have all of them. I constrain myself to x and y axis so our math is only limited to two dimensions. Having a look at the serial monitor, it is apparent that there is something wrong with the calibration again. The values never went negative. So I had a closer look at the serial monitor, copied those values in our beloved MS Excel and inserted a graph. As the saying goes, a picture is equivalent to 1000 words, here this chart is equivalent to 2 or 3000 readings. It is clear that the values of the magnetic field do change in a sinusoidal manner with a offset. This gave me a bit of hope that this project is within our scope. After a lot of trial and testing, I was able to narrow down my offset values. Once done, I checked my serial monitor one last time, copied those values into an excel and was happy to see a beautiful sign looking graph. After having the luxury of components, I squared them, added their squares and rooted to get the magnitude. All these values will then lead us to the sine theta value. Now all is left to do is get the sine inverse and now we are potentially ready to get out of a jungle with a handheld DIY digital compass. That's when engineer's old ally math comes into the picture and screws a few things up. Turns out sine and cosine inverse functions have their range which spans fully 180 degrees. But for a compass we need full 360 degrees. So in order to get a proper way out of your jungle I added some more lines of the code and finally the instrument started working as I expected it to. I hope you like the short addition to my previous project. More pictures and code as always on Instructables. Thanks for watching.